What up, gang of language? Carolina Jackpot time coming at you on Sunday morning. It's rainy and nasty once again, but despite that, I hope all of you are having a good day. I am so far. Just out putting a little bit of work in. Creeping, creeping, creeping around. Hey, uh, if you are new around here, please give some consideration to staying true around here. Subscribe to the Carolina Jackpot channel if you enjoy the content here. Also, if you enjoy the content here, please hit this video with a thumbs up. I really would appreciate it. Helps Carolina Jackpot out a lot. If you don't like the content here, give it a thumbs down. Doesn't matter. Uh, any kind of reaction means that there was an interaction and that's good for Carolina Jackpot. So let's get right on into it. South Carolina uh, ho hosting, oh, 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 came talk this morning, hosting like eight visitors yesterday. Uh, all these folks uh, transfer portal uh, enrollees and potential Gamecocks, guys that have been offered uh, by the University of South Carolina. They came down to Columbia, I think Friday night, and they'll be there uh, yesterday, well they were there yesterday and will be there part of the day today before they depart uh, to return to home school, wherever they're going to. Uh, man, uh, not a lot of real big names there. I guess the only name that anybody would really recognize would be Rocket Sanders, the uh, running back from Arkansas. Uh, put up some really, really good numbers in 2022, uh, about 1,500 yards and I think 10 touchdowns. He had a really good game in game two against South Carolina. Uh, not surprising our run defense uh, in 2022 was absolutely horrendous. It improved somewhat in 2023, but we still have a ways to go. He was injured a lot last year, which has kind of hampered his numbers. And this guy was actually recruited really, really hard by South Carolina and was like the, his number two choice for ultimately choosing Arkansas out of high school now in Florida. Uh, you know, he would be a big get for South Carolina, assuming that he is over uh, his, his spell of, of being injured. Uh, he will be, he'll be a big pickup. He's coming with a big NIL price tag, though. That, you know, I would think that would be the only thing that would sway him from coming here would be if someone else would offer him more money. He'll have some other visits scheduled, too. We'll see on him. Uh, Oscar Attaway is a young man from North Texas. Played for the Mean Green or the Eagles, whatever you want to call them. Some of these teams have, like, two or three nicknames. They're the Mean Green. I... He was not one of the people that was in attendance, but he has been offered by South Carolina and has a crystal ball to South Carolina uh, from 24-7 sports. He looks like a solid back, 700-something yards rushing last year, had six yards carry. So those were numbers, yardage-wise, very similar to Mario Anderson Jr., but his yards per carry was almost double Mario Anderson Jr., so he had a lot of less carries. Now, I don't know anything about North Texas football, to be honest with you. I don't even know who their coach is. Don't know who their quarterback is. I, I not, not watch not one down of them playing football this past year. It's just not in my wheelhouse. Uh, but those are decent statistics. And he'll have two years to play if he gets a medical red shirt for 2021. If that gets approved. Uh, he, he was not able to play then. We'll see on that one. Uh, Elijah Green's a young man from North Carolina uh, who rushed for 500 and something yards in 2022. Then last year, he decided to take a red shirt after a couple of games in, That this being 2023. He decided to do that. I, I'm not sure why. I, maybe because Omarion Hampton had solidified himself as RB1, and this guy just figured, hey, he's not going to really carry the ball a lot. I might as well just take a red shirt and you know, try to enter the portal this coming season. I don't know, as I'm a real big fan of doing that. I mean, you know, try to earn your spot back in practice or with, in the game time that you get. I mean, that's really, to me, I, I don't want to say it's selfish because I know that things have changed, but... I, I still am not a big fan of doing stuff like that. Just, you know, I'm going to take my ball and sit down this year uh, because, you know, somebody beat me out. Uh, college football, y'all guys, is going to end up getting ruined. 
like college basketball was for a while. It seems like a lot of people have bounced back to college basketball the past couple of years. Uh, I definitely have because my team is currently 8-1. Tater Man's sitting over there. We're being undefeated. Your time's coming. Um, it seemed like the only time anybody would be interested in college basketball was during March Madness. Now people are more interested in the regular season, and that's a good thing. College football, I think, is going to go on a bit of a uh, tailspin like college basketball did. And college basketball did that because of the one-and-done deal and so many good teams with, with players that would play one season then bolt for the NBA. So you never could attach yourself <coughs> to a really good player. You could never attach – they could never attach themselves to a brand. And it, people lost interest in it. Now it, the, the interest seems to be coming back because I think people have just kind of accepted that for what it is. I don't know that college football will suffer the same fate. It certainly won't with me. But a lot of people may get sick of, of this kind of stuff going on. Uh, a couple of uh, defensive prospects for Texas A&M. L.T. Overton, one of the defensive linemen. Uh, and his brother also... I think I know LT visited that yesterday, and I'm not sure about the brother. The brother hadn't had a whole lot of significant playing time, uh, but LT has. Uh, young man, uh, Jalen Kilgore, that plays for the Gamecocks, his brother uh, plays at Tennessee Tech. He's another one in the portal that's almost certainly going to become a Gamecock. Another one also most certainly going to become a Gamecock would be Jaden McGowan, young man from Lawrence, South Carolina, who is uh, – in the transfer portal from Vanderbilt. He's been there for two seasons. 300-something yards receiving this year. I think he, he returned a kick for a touchdown against Hawaii. Those aren't eye-popping numbers, but let's keep in mind he's playing at Vanderbilt, you know, not playing you know, with the best quarterback in the world, not playing behind the best offensive line in the world. That quarterback wasn't. So you know, maybe get somewhere where he's got a little bit more help. Uh, he can do some things and be a little more special. He's a smaller guy, uh, looks to be more in the more in the mold of an Amirian Brown type player. We'll see what's going on with that. Thought it was also interesting yesterday <coughs> that there was an article over on uh, the Gamecocks twenty four seven Sports site, thebigspur.com. Uh, Shane Beamer kind of took off in the middle yesterday of the visits with these players and he flew to Virginia to Scott Stadium in Charlottesville to watch the uh, or one of the Virginia State Championship ball games in South Carolina has a commitment playing in that game um, but I, I thought it was very interesting that they remarked in this article that Torian Gray the defensive backs coach and Clayton White were scheduled to attend the game. The Carolina Jackpot said this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I do find that very interesting. I find that very interesting that those two were scheduled to go watch the kid play, but then Beamer decides to go. That's kind of weird, isn't it? It's kind of weird, isn't it? It makes me think that maybe he's told them that, hey, we're, you know, y'all aren't doing the, making those visits anymore. Is there a reason behind that? Maybe so. Maybe so. I don't know. I would sure hate to lose Torian Gray as a defensive backs coach. I think he does a good job. But business is business, guys. And I've already told you how I feel about Clayton White. And anybody with a set of eyeballs can tell that that defense is terrible last year. Yeah, it improved the last three games. It sure did. Sure did. It couldn't have gotten much worse. It improved. But <laughs> the whole body of work, I mean, you lost the game against Florida. South Carolina would have been in a bowl game if you could. You can't make a stop. Uh, I ain't going to talk about that anymore. Up 11 points with two minutes to play and you lose. Needs to be replaced. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe Beamer's gotten his balls out of his wife's purse and has decided to go make some big boy decisions. 
But anyway, the guy who authored the article, Hale McGranahan, who writes over there, then comes back to say something like, well, I, I think that, that White and, and, and uh, Torian Gray were probably there too. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, buddy. All three of those coaches were there for that, for one player's state championship game when you're having a massive recruiting weekend at home. I don't think so, bro. I don't think so. I think Beamer went up there to see the kid play, just to kind of save face, shake a hand or two, and then hit the road and come back because uh, he's told these other two that they're not participating in that stuff. That's just what Carolina Jackpot personally thinks, but that's just a conspiracy theory on my part. You know, kind of like the uh, Tennessee man with the uh, wristband conspiracy theorist. <laughs> I don't know, but it's, uh, that's very interesting. So we'll see with all these transfers. That stuff's got to work itself out, and these guys all have other visits to take, but you know, it, it would be nice to, it would be really, really nice, I think, to land a Rocket Sanders, uh, a guy that you, you feel like you can kind of take it to the house with, a guy who, you know, you, you may could possibly with the benefit, and I think South Carolina's offensive line is going to be improved this coming year. Is it going to be much improved? I don't know. That would be wonderful to see, but I think it's definitely going to be an improved unit. I would think it's probably going to be one of the more improved units in the SEC next year and would be nice to kind of stick it to some of these people who have not given the program a chance and decided to bolt uh, for the money uh, of NIL or for whatever other reason that they decided to get out of here for them. Bad look I saw yesterday on social media. There was a one Gamecock fan in a Facebook group, and I wasn't in this group. I just saw screenshots of it kind of going at it with uh, Mario Anderson's daddy. Just stop. Give it a rest. Really give it a rest. I can understand people being angry and frustrated with these guys. I'm angry and frustrated too, and I made no bones about the way I felt about Juice Wells. I think he's a giant shit bag. Uh, you were making all this NIL money at South Carolina. You took all that NIL money. You laid around the entire second half of the season last year. Didn't play when you could have played. I think that it's widely known now that he could have played in those games. Probably from about Missouri on, he could have he could have played. Uh, but he chose not to, which is uh, sorry, in my opinion. Uh, so I, I really don't care that he's out of here. That's the kind of people that, you know, the, yeah, they're going to help you win some ball games. The kind of character they display is, is trash, though. It's absolute trash. And he was getting his hair cut in the Gamecock facility a couple of days before. Um, his buddy Lane Kiffin is out here taking pictures of the South Carolina golf cart outside of a dorm. You know, just a bunch of crap. Just a bunch of crap, and he's just he's just twisting the knife is all he's doing and trying to get a reaction. Going live on Instagram and talking about how crazy the Gamecock fans are. Well, yeah, they're crazy. You sorry, SOB, because you was good, and they wanted to see you play, and they supported you, and then you're going to just, I don't I think that's crap. Anderson it was is a different case, in my opinion. I mean, he entered the portal, and I haven't heard a word from him. Hadn't heard a word from him, hadn't seen anything from him on social media. He's not out there, you know, making a mockery of South Carolina or trying to make a mockery of himself. He just wants to explore his options, I guess. And he may have gotten some bad advice, but there's a lot of people out there talking about him. You know, he ain't no good anyway. I mean, he only averaged 3.5 yards carry. I got into a, a little Twitter spat with uh, some ass wife yesterday who was talking about him and how he was a below average back. And I said, you do realize that below average back was playing behind a very below average offensive line, don't you? He's like, give it rest, dude. He's not even top 200, blah, 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 blah. Yes, he's not top 200 because he was playing behind a terrible offensive line, you moron. They go hand in hand. I, I don't know if you realize that those go hand in hand as far as in terms of playing the game of football goes, but, but they absolutely do. The flashes that he showed, the abilities that he showed me, I think that he's a really good back, and I think he's going to be a good player somewhere else. Unfortunately, it's not going to be with us, and I, I don't know why he left. Uh, it's kind of concerning. But once again, there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm trying in the new year to 
not have as much room for negativity in my carry-on, meaning that I'm not going to get as upset over things that I have absolutely no control over, things I don't understand, and things that uh, I have gotten really upset about in the past. Now, don't take that as this channel not going to be entertaining, because it is absolutely going to be just as entertaining as it ever has been. Um, what else? Oh, I noticed uh, in my comment section, somebody left me something uh, about Pigskin Pete, uh, our buddy, the Clemson fan, a Clemson YouTuber, suspending his uh, live streams and, and that uh, for the foreseeable future or until he deems it necessary to start doing them again. Look, I don't know what's going on with that. I hope everything's okay with him and his family. Um, you know, sometimes people need to take a break. As you all know, we had a little bit of a disagreement over on the live show a few weeks ago over some things that Carolina Jackpot said on my live stream in the Kentucky game that were kind of, kind of ugly, and I apologized for them, and I meant that when I apologized for them uh, and, and felt bad about it. He's, you know, a, a nice guy, and he puts on a good channel. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know what happened with that. But um, I know he was very, very upset over the uh, situation with Florida State getting snubbed from the playoffs. And Jesus Christ. I mean, hopefully that's not why he's not doing videos. I mean, because, gee, I mean, because that, once again, it's something you can't control. Something you have absolutely no control over. So if you're on their side then be on their side. That That's that's cool and everything, but don't let it cramp your style and keep you from doing the things that you enjoy doing. I, I wouldn't let it affect me to that point. Um, I mean, I don't know what to say. Playoff committee made the right decision. Everybody who can see things from a logical point of view and, and not you know, trying to uh, look at it from the point of view of somebody got screwed and their feelings got hurt, can see that. They can see that. Florida State would get beat by 30 plus points if they made it to play one of those playoff teams. So why do you even want to play them? If you are if you don't even stand a chance, you don't stand a chance. The playoff committee knows. They've watched those games. They could see that neither one of those quarterbacks could hit the broad side of the barn nor run their way outside of a wet paper satchel. They're just not any good. They're horrible, and they all want to point to, well, look, look at Michigan's quarterback. Michigan won the Big Ten. They won all their games. They won what is widely regarded as the second toughest conference, beat Ohio State. They've been ranked right behind Georgia until Georgia lost. It's just the way that it is. It's just the way that it is. I, I'm sorry, guys. I, I am really sorry that you, you didn't make the playoffs. And... Alabama was a team that knocked off Georgia. Georgia was ranked number one. They've been ranked number one for God knows how long. They are, are well, somebody will go back and tell me, well, no, they weren't ranked number one this week right here. They won 29 games in a row. Two-time defending national champions. They beat them. The committee looks at that. They look hard at that, and that weighs hard on them. I'm sorry, without a Jordan Travis in that game, you don't even stand a chance of it being competitive. I don't know that Florida State would have been able to keep it competitive with any of these teams, even with Jordan Travis. That's just the football fan here talking that sees what is going on. And, and no, it, it's not fair. It's not fair. It is fair because there's rules over here. Number four on those rules says that if there is a player or coach missing, who contributed to the success of the regular season and their absence is going to otherwise affect it. It's clearly stated. I mean, what is the point? What is the, what is the rationale behind having <coughs> rules and guidelines to follow if you're not going to follow them? If everybody's just going to bitch and try to get their own way and threaten a lawsuit and threaten to boycott and shut down everything because a rule was followed, because a guideline was followed. 
when they've never set that precedent before. Yeah, because they've never had the same exact situation to deal with before, you morons. That's what a precedent is. Well, Cardell Jones back in 2014 in Ohio State, Cardell Jones was better than these other two Jimbo bronies that you got running around for Florida State. And prove that out. But it's not fair for the playoff committee to judge who who does this. Why even play the games then? Why even play a regular season? Now you're just crying and whining. Just crying and whining. Flopping around like a, a fish that's been caught that knows it's about ready to croak. That's just not going to go down. And won't stop flopping. You'll never shut up. You'll never be quiet about it. We'll never hear the end of it. And here's another one. Oh, why is Coop fan even here talking about something in the playoffs? Your team five and seven. You're just a farm team for everybody else. Blah, 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 blah. All those things may be true, but I still have a set of eyeballs and a functioning brain to where I can comment on college football and make my feelings known about something. I'm not an Alabama fan. Never have been, never will be. The only times I ever pulled for Alabama was when they're playing Clemson, and I pulled for them in the SEC championship game against Florida because I had a feeling that they would win that game. So I sprinkled some on the money line. So obviously if I sprinkle some on the money line, I'm going to pull for them to win so that I can get the benefits of what happens when you win when you sprinkle some on the money line. That's the only time I ever pulled for Alabama. I don't like Alabama. You should have seen some of my videos last year. They're probably still up somewhere. Some of the crap I was talking about them and their basketball team having an accessory to murder out there running around playing basketball for them. And, oh, it's just like it's okay. No, but, but Carolina Jackpot just loves Alabama, though. Yeah, give me a break. Give me a break, people. Anyway, I think we've covered about all the pertinent topics here. Um, uh, people coming into um, Columbia for a visit. Uh, potential weird stuff going on there. A uh, little, 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 little wishy-washy going on with the, with the coaches there not being at this game. Uh, so the high school kid, um, Pigskin Pete, and what's going on with the channel, I don't really know. Oh, he did say over on the Lunch Money show the other night when him and Uncle Lou were having a conversation with someone named Edward. I don't know really who Edward is. Um, he, he, sounds, uh, he sounds like something else, though. So. Uh to ask him if he'd ever had Carolina Jackpot to guest host with him on his channel and uh, that would definitely get his ratings up. Well, I can definitely say this. Pigskin Pete told zero lies there because that would definitely have gotten Edward's ratings up. I don't know currently where Edward's ratings lie or where they're headed to, but they would definitely go up if Carolina Jackpot was uh, helping him guest host whatever he does. I don't know if he does college football content. I don't know if he um, you know, has a travel channel. I don't know if he's knitting things on his channel out of yarn. I'm not really sure. But Carolina Jackpot would get the ratings up there uh, as well. So I think we've covered that. And then we've covered uh, FSU crybabies and how they're, they're never going to stop. Um, so, hey, it is what it is. I, I hope everybody has a great day today. And I will see you all later on. Peace. And I'm out of here. Oh, 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 by the way, I'm going to link it down in the description box below. Rockabelly864 was back in the building yesterday afternoon. Took a visit to East Flat Rock, North Carolina, and ate at a place called Dairy O. And um, it was a very interesting food review and a very interesting visit. Go check it out. It's down in the description box below. Go give him a shout out and a subscription if you don't mind. I'll see you guys later. Peace. I'm out of here. Go get caught. Ah, ah.